Support comes from Pasadena Playhouse, presenting Jelly's Last Jam. Follow Jelly Roll Morton, the self-proclaimed inventor of jazz, in this ambitious musical masterpiece that's sure to blow the roof off the theater. Performances begin May 29th. Tickets at PasadenaPlayhouse.org. Support for LAist comes from the Carsey Wolf Center at UC Santa Barbara, partnering with LAist for Theatrical Futures, a panel discussion on the state of theatrical moviegoing. Thursday, June 6 at UCSB. Info at carseywolf.ucsb.edu. Today on the LA Report, UCLA Chancellor Jean Block will testify before a House committee tomorrow about anti Semitism on college campuses. Earlier appearances before Congress by other college presidents have not gone well. Negative headlines over the police breakup of the pro-Palestinian camp at USC has not cost the university donor support, unlike some colleges. We'll have that for you. And keepsakes from a Hollywood legend go on display tomorrow in Chinatown. It's Wednesday, May 22nd. I'm Nick Roman. This is the L.A. Report from L.A. State 89.3. UCLA Chancellor Gene Block, who plans to retire this summer, will testify tomorrow before Congress. A preview from reporter McKenna Sievertson. Block is expected to be grilled by the House Committee on Education and Workforce, along with the presidents of Northwestern and Rutgers Universities, about anti-Semitism on college campuses. He's faced criticism after 200 people were arrested earlier this month when a campus encampment protesting the war in Gaza was violently attacked, then cleared by law enforcement in riot gear. His testimony comes just one day after UCLA announced campus police chief John Thomas has been temporarily reassigned while they investigate their security process. For LAist, I'm McKenna Siebertson. From UCLA, let's look across town to USC. It had its own pro-Palestinian protest camp and its own negative headlines when police broke it up. That kind of publicity is not the sort of thing that big money donors want to see. At New York's Columbia University, donors publicly withdrew money when negative headlines followed campus unrest there. But our correspondent, Adolfo Guzman Lopez, says... That's not happening with donors at USC. USC's top administrators face big criticism over campus protests. USC hired Carol Folt as president five years ago because she'd navigated a big sports scandal at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Former USC professor Ange-Marie Hancock said the big difference between the two campuses is the private nature of the university and the big outsized role that donors play. USC's faculty censured Folt. It's unclear if she has lost support from major donors or trustees. USC said donations have not been affected. I'm Adolfo Guzman Lopez. L.A. County Public Health says medical debt is a public health crisis, and now it's working on ways to help Angelenos reduce that debt. Collectively in L.A. County, we owe nearly $3 billion for hospital fees, doctor visits, other medical needs. KFF Health News reporter Molly Castle Work says it's even a problem for those with health insurance. Because even if you have insurance, you're still facing high deductible plans and high premiums, not to mention high costs. L.A. County Public Health plans to track medical debt and hospital collections. In some cases, it plans to buy up medical debt and forgive it. We have more about the county effort at LAS.com. When we come back, keepsakes from a Hollywood legend go on display tomorrow in Chinatown. Support for LAist comes from Apple TV+, Plus, presenting Monarch, Legacy of Monsters. Starring Kurt Russell, Wyatt Russell, Anna Sawai, and Godzilla. Two siblings follow in their father's footsteps to uncover his involvement with Monarch, a secretive organization connected to Godzilla. TV Line says this series is incredible, and Empire roars that it's epic. Following this podcast, you can hear remarks by father and son acting duo Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell and executive producer Chris Black. More on Monarch Legacy of Monsters at fyc.appletvplus.com. Support for LAist comes from Pasadena Playhouse, presenting Jelly's Last Jam. When Jelly Will Morton's soul is forced to face the music, the self-proclaimed inventor of jazz is left at the ultimate crossroads. 
This lively musical follows the journey from the back alleys of New Orleans to the sparkling stages of New York, featuring a sizzling bandstand, electrifying tap dancing, and soulful tunes. On stage for four weeks only, Jelly's Last Jam. Performances begin May 29th. Tickets available now at PasadenaPlayhouse.org. This is the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. The city of Huntington Beach might hire a private firm to manage its public library system. But Malayist reporter Yusra Farzan says a survey of 400 people in Huntington Beach found that two-thirds opposed the move. Supporters of the move to leave the management of the library system up to a third party say it can help save the city money. Those opposed include library employees, concerned that their benefits package will decrease and they'd be forced to leave as a result. Over the last year, Huntington Beach libraries have become the focus of the city's culture wars. Books deemed obscene were removed from libraries and a committee was created to review children's library books for sexual content. For LA East, I'm Yusra Farazan. The L.A. City Council's Eunices Hernandez and Marquise Harris-Dawson have joined progressive policy advocates in a call that the city budget for the next fiscal year includes more money for unarmed mental health crisis response. The group L.A. Forward wants the city to put in $2.5 million to make dispatch services more efficient, plus another $2 million to evaluate where there are gaps across the city. Here's the city council's Eunice Hernandez. We're asking the city to invest in building alternative crisis responses that are life-affirming, that are culturally humble, and that will provide our communities the care they need when they need it most in their moments of crises. Mental health advocates and family members have called for years for alternative responses that would bring mental health workers and not police to crisis situations. Never-before-seen keepsakes owned by actress Anna Mae Wong, Hollywood's first Chinese-American film star, will be on view in Chinatown starting tomorrow. The story from L.A.'s correspondent Josie Wong. A mahjong set, family photos, a makeup kit emblazoned with her name in Chinese, Wang Liu Song. A new exhibit at the Chinese American Museum strives to show the inner life of the L.A.-born icon and her pride in her Chinese heritage. Her biographer, Katie G. Salisbury, says Wong grew tired of playing China dolls and dragon ladies in silent films. She decided that she was no longer going to take on any unsympathetic roles and she would only play roles that reflected well on her people. The exhibition rides a surge in interest in Wong, the subject of two new books and an upcoming biopic. For LAist, I'm Josie Wong. Thanks for listening to the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. Be sure to listen again tomorrow morning when Suzanne Watley brings you the L.A. Report AM edition. The L.A. Report is produced by Libby Rainey and Tiffany Ujiea. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse, our director of content development. Our engineer, Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about this evening's stories at LAist.com. You can also listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. You know, listeners like you help make the LA Report possible, so please donate at LAist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. Support for LAist comes from Apple TV Plus. Presenting Monarch, Legacy of Monsters. Starring Kurt Russell, Wyatt Russell, Anna Sawai, and Godzilla. Father and son acting duo Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell play older and younger versions of Lee Shaw, the founder of Monarch a secretive organization connected to Godzilla. As actors and team players, Kurt and Wyatt have a lot in common. We've had a similar life. His game was hockey, mine was baseball. One point in our lives, it was how we were going to make our living. To apply that to our business, I don't know how to look at life other than as a a win-lose ball ball game. I think we're the type of people that we want to be impact players. And you want to help your club win every time you go out there. Whether that club's a movie set, a story you're telling, on the ice, on the baseball field. I think we realize that we are much more alike than we are different. (laughs) Here's executive producer Chris Black. I think it should be about this family. I think it should be about secrets. It should be about a pair of siblings discovering each other and discovering that their father 
could not be trusted and was not the man he said he was. That's what brings them together and sends them on a quest, if you will, to find out the truth about the family and their father. And it's that journey that takes you into the world of the monsters. For Kurt and Wyatt Russell, being so close helped them sort out how to both play the same character. We worked together quite a bit. We worked together well. What's been your most favorite part of the show? When I was working with you on trying to figure Lee Shaw out, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then taking it to the guys and saying, what do you think? Uh, who is this guy? What, where's he going to go? Where did he come from? And doing that, doing that with you, I've, I've actually never done that really with much with another actor, but I've never played the same, the same role. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. TV Line says Monarch Legacy of Monsters is incredible and Empire roars that it's epic. More on Monarch Legacy of Monsters at fyc.appletvplus.com.